The Gospel of Gold by G.S. Lewis Even when his father had gone, Gold was kept in the visiting room. As it turned out, his next guests had been right on the heels of his father in the waiting area, and they were no less eager to see him. Marina! Genichi! Gold! The trio met in a three-way hug, and Gold's mind was eased to see Genichi back in his casual clothing. However awkwardly their trip to Goldenrod Underground might have gone, it seemed successful in the end. He had no intention of bringing it up in front of the police as they continued to stand guard. But before he pulled away from the embrace, Genichi gripped his arm. Don't look, he whispered sharply. But that one guard might be a rocket. Gold barely managed to retain his facial composure as he stepped back. There was no way he had misheard it. He wanted to ask Genichi how he knew or identify which of the two guards it was, but he knew it would be foolish. We couldn't find you at the Goldenrod Gym, Marina said with a sigh, but we found your stick. There were also plenty of rumors going around, and it didn't take long to track you here. Should you be here? Gold asked, realizing the risk they had taken in coming to the police station. If they're seeing you with me, don't start that up again, scolded Marina. I told you, the rumors are already churning. Everyone knows that the three of us are together, and have been since Ecrutique. Okay. Gold shrugged and sat at his side of the table. He stole a quick glance at the guards. They stood still as British sentinels, waxen figures at the door. Still, he knew they were listening to every word. This is my new home for a little while, he said, motioning around at the utterly blank walls with his hand. Until the next event comes, whenever that is, if I were still a league trainer, this detour would have ended my chances for the champion's throne. What did you do to get taken here? asked Jinichi in a thunderstruck tone. I healed a Machop's broken neck. Gold held up his hands. That's it? That's it. But Whitney's convinced it was a sneak spray potion. Jinichi tilted his head upward and gazed indignantly at the ceiling, as if appealing to heaven for help. Marina shook her head slowly. You know, said Jinichi, striking the table gently with a fist, I just had an idea. Your superpowers got you into this. Maybe they can get you out. He poked his thumb at the guards. See if either of those guys got his finger jammed in a cop car door or something. Then just magically heal him like you do, and he'll be all amazed and... No. Gold shook his head firmly. First of all, even an idiot knows never to touch a police officer. He saw Genichi wilt a little in his seat, and slightly regretted the harshness of his rebuke. Sorry, but more importantly, these powers don't really belong to me anyway. I'm like... I'm like the Pokeball that contains them, but they come from the Pokemon inside. Where did that analogy come from? He wondered. Or that insight? Okay, forget the semantics game! said Jinichi with clear impatience. You want to talk Pokemon power? I know that Ho-Oh is never far from you. Why hasn't she already blown a huge hole in the walls with her fire blast and busted you out? I don't know! Gold shot back, raising his voice. Why doesn't God just come down right now and destroy all the evil in the world? Tell me that! The two boys glared at each other from across the table. There was no enmity between them. Rather, it was the frustration that each had for the other as his worldview was challenged. Marina remained unusually silent. I don't get it, Jinichi muttered in a petulant sulk. Between you and your bird friend, you have all this power to do things, more power than the average Pokemon trainer will ever achieve. I can't believe you're not using it. Yeah, spoken like a true league trainer. 
Gold could taste the bitterness in his mouth. No matter how much power you gain, it'll never be enough, will it? I guess the last couple of days were a wasted lesson. Jinichi looked stung and hurt. From beside him, Marina's mouth fell open. Gold! She exclaimed, with more surprise than rebuke. That was too far! Gold lowered his eyes to the tabletop and ran his hands over his face, feeling properly chastised. I'm sorry, he said for a second time through his palms. I hate this. I wish I could just go back home to Ecrutique and be done already. This whole journey is turning into one long fight. That's what we signed up for, said Marina with a sigh. But staying together has made it bearable until now, at least for me. She looked between Janichi and Gold, and there was a troubled look on her face. Gold is trapped here until they decide to release him, she said softly with a faraway look in her eyes. But if Janichi goes on, I will have to choose who to follow. Is she talking to herself? Gold thought, or guilting Janichi. Janichi seemed to be wondering the same thing. Having forfeited her gym challenge, Marina had made companionship her new priority on the journey. She was the glue that held them all together, but that could not be if Janichi went forward with his own gym challenge. His ambition would force her to either continue with him as she had from the beginning, or stand faithfully with Gold. If Janichi lingered in Goldenrod, however, it would almost certainly put him hopelessly behind schedule. As Gold had put earlier, it would end his chance for the champion's throne. At some point, he needs to be left to his own decisions. Guys, said Gold sadly but firmly, face it, I'm stuck in here for the foreseeable future. My dad's doing his best to help, but there's nothing left for you here. Don't let my situation weigh you down. Marina looked at Janichi critically, and Gold could tell from her expression that she hadn't listened to a word he'd said. She seemed determined to stay and hold out hope that Gold would be let out sooner than later. If Janichi left the city before that and broke up their fellowship, she would definitely hold it against him for a long time to come. We just arrived here, Janichi said, avoiding eye contact. We can put off the question of splitting up for a little while, at least until I fought the gym. He fidgeted with his hands. I want to get revenge for gold. Oh, is that why you're doing it? Asked Marina, with a nasty edge of sarcasm. There it was, confirmation that, after everything, Janichi was still dead set on achieving badges. Not... not just that, stammered Janichi. I need four badges to visit Ecrutique's Belchime Trail and rightfully enter Bell Tower. I... I want to see the phoenix again. Gold searched his face, looking for truth in his eyes. Was he just trying to be diplomatic, or did he really mean it? You don't need badges to see spirit, he said. But I guess it would be nice to visit her tower someday. Marina pushed out her chair and stood. I guess we're sleeping on it, she concluded, still looking far from satisfied. But whatever happens, we'll be back to see you, Gold. Gold nodded and smiled. Thanks. It's nice to be thought of. Before Gold returned to his cell, he asked the guard escorting him what time it was. Seven o'clock in the evening, it turned out. He was due to be served dinner soon. It wasn't until after the officer had shut his door and gone that Gold remembered Janichi's warning. What if that guy was the undercover Team Rocket member? His pulse increased slightly. What if there's more of them? I know Janichi couldn't say anything, so I tried not to linger on it. But he had once considered Team Rocket nothing but an inconsequential band of misfits who got by on stealing. However, 
If they had managed to infiltrate this far into civilized society, up to and including law enforcement, just how powerful are they? How much influence do they actually hold? How much danger am I really in here? Spirit, he whispered, propping himself against the wall. Wherever you are now, please watch over me.